Hey guys, it's Colton Richardson. And so about 10 days ago, Gabby Petito's parents filed a lawsuit against Brian Laundrie's parents. And so they filed a petition, and I'm going to walk you through it. And if you've been following along the whole Brian uh, Laundrie and Gabby Petito situation, then it's definitely something you'll want to watch. So I've got it pulled up right here, and let's take a look at it. I'm going to walk you guys through the whole thing. Uh, the first thing to notice that it was filed in Florida. We'll see who, probably one of them lives there, so we'll see who lives there. And the amount that they're claiming is over $100,000. Um, the type of case is negligence. So they only checked negligence and they didn't check something more specific. And so let's see what, what negligence theory they're kind of saying alleged happened. So the remedies that they're seeking is monetary, so not injunctive relief. And they're not seeking punitive damages, which is to punish for wrongdoing. So some type of monetary damages that they're seeking. So Joseph, and, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt, they are probably separated now, it looks like. And Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry, again in Florida. This is an actual action for damages that exceeds $30,000 exclusive of prejudgment interest costs and attorney's fees. And up there at the top, we saw over $100,000. And so they're probably just alleging that this is not a small claims uh, issue, small claims court issue in Oklahoma that's below $10,000 or at least in Tulsa. And so they're just saying that this is supposed to be in district court instead of uh, small claims court. <clears throat> So Sarasota County, Florida is where the defendants reside. So Christy, Christopher Laundry and Ro Roberta Laundry. Joseph Petito lives in Vero Beach and Blue Point. Nicole lives in Blue Point, New York. And the Laundries live in Northport, Florida. Brian Laundrie and Gabrielle Petito became engaged to marry on or about July 2nd, 2020. On July 2nd, 2021, Brian Laundrie and Gabrielle Petito left New York in a van owned by Gabrielle Petito to take a trip to the western United States, which was expected to last for several months. Prior to the trip, taken by Gabrielle Petito and Brian Laundrie, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt and Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie had a cordial relationship Gabrielle Petito had hopes of becoming a travel influencer, a van lifer, and document her cross-country travels on social media sites such as YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. During the course of the aforementioned trip, Gabrielle Petito called her family almost daily, including her parents, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt, and her siblings. The last communication that Gabrielle Petito had with Joseph Petito was on August 21st, 2021. The last communication that Nicole Schmidt had with Gabrielle Petito was on August 27th, 2021. <clears throat> it is believed that on August 27th, 2021, Brian Laundrie murdered Gabrielle Petito. The cause of her death was blunt force injuries to the head and neck with manual strangulation. And that probably came from the medical examiner's report. I haven't seen the medical examiner's report. <clears throat> Gabrielle Petito was 22 years of age at the time of her death after Brian Laundrie murdered Gabrielle Petito, Brian Laundrie sent text messages back and forth between his cell phone and Gabrielle Petito's cell phone in an effort to hide the fact that she was deceased. That is very interesting. On August 27, 2021, it is believed that Brian Laundrie sent a text to Nicole Schmidt in which he referred to Gabrielle Petito's grandfather, Stan, by name. Gabrielle Petito never called her grandfather by his name. It is believed and therefore averred that on or about August 28, 2021, Brian Laundrie advised his parents, Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie, that he had murdered Gabrielle Petito. So the Petito's parents are saying that Laundrie, Brian Laundrie told his parents that he murdered Gabrielle Petito. On that same date, Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie spoke with attorney Steve Bertolino and sent him a retainer on September 2nd, 2021. On August 30th, 2021, Brian Laundrie sent a text message from Gabrielle Petito's cell phone to Nicole Schmidt stating that there was no service in Yosemite Park in an effort to deceive Nicole Schmidt into believing that 
Gabby, Gabby Petito is still alive. On September 1st, 2021, Brian Laundrie returned to the home of his parents, Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie, giving, driving Gabrielle Petito's van. After this point in time, there is no contact between Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt on the one hand and Christopher Laundrie and Roberto on the other. From August 27, 2021 until September 19, 2021, when Gabrielle Petito's remains were found at the Spread Creek Dispersed Camping Area in Wyoming, plaintiffs were extremely distraught and were attempting to locate Gabrielle Petito. While Gabrielle Petito's family was suffering, the Laundrie family went on a vacation to Fort DeSoto Park on September 6 and 20, September 6 through 7, 2021. <clears throat> In an effort to avoid any contact with Nicole Schmidt, on or about September 10, 2021, Roberta Laundrie blocked Nicole Schmidt on her cell phone such that neither phone calls nor texts could be delivered, and she blocked her on Facebook. On September 14, 2021, the full knowledge that Gabrielle Petito had been murdered by their son. Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry, through their lawyer, issued the following statement. It is our understanding that a search has been organized for Miss Petito in or near Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. On behalf of Laundry family, it is our hope that the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family. On September, September 6, 2021, attorney Richard Stafford on on behalf of Gabrielle Petito's family, issued a letter to Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie as follows. We are writing this letter to ask you to help find our beautiful daughter. We understand you are going through a difficult time and your instinct to protect your son is strong. We ask you to protect yourselves in your our shoes. We haven't been able to sleep or eat and our lives are falling apart. We believe you know the location of where Brian left Gabby. We beg you to tell us, as a parent, how could you let us go through this pain and not help us? As a parent, how could you... Put Gabby's younger brothers and sisters through this. Gabby lived with you for a, a, over a year. She was going to be your daughter-in-law. How can you keep her hidden location hidden? You were both at Jim and Nicole's house. You were both so happy that Brian and Gabby got engaged and were planning to spend their lives together. Please, if you or your family have any decent left, decency left, please tell us where Gabby is located. Tell us if we are even looking in the right place. All we want is Gabby to come home. Please help us make this happen. Make that happen. So this petition has a lot of specific facts, and it, it definitely might need to. Despite the fact that Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt implored Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry to tell them if their daughter was alive and if she was not, where her remains were located, Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry refused to respond to either Joseph Petito, Nicole Schmidt, or law enforcement. Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie instructed that all contacts were to be made through their attorney, Stephen Bertolino, and he issued no comment when asked about Gabrielle Petito's well-being. While Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt were desperately searching for information concerning their daughter, Christopher Laundrie and Roberta Laundrie were keeping the whereabouts of Brian Laundrie secret and is believed were making arrangements for him to leave the country. Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry knew of the mental, mental suffering and anguish of Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt and knew that they could alleviate or at least in part such mental suffering and anguish by disclosing what they knew about the well-being and the location of the remains of Gabrielle Petito. Yet, they repeatedly refused to do so. In doing so, Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry acted with malice or great indifference to the rights of Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry exhibit some extreme and outrageous contact with which constitutes behavior under the circumstances which goes beyond all possible bounds of decency and is regarded as shocking, atrocious, and utterly intolerable in a civilized community. So the direct result of the willfulness and maliciousness of Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry, Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt had been caused to suffer pain, suffering mental anguish, inconvenience, loss of capacity for enjoyment of life experienced in the past and to be experienced in the future. Wherefore, plaintiffs Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt respectfully request this court enter judgment in their favor and against the defendants to award them compensation for the damages they have suffered together with cost and any other deems appropriate. So they didn't really set out any claims like negligence um, 
or negligent infliction of emotional distress or intentional infliction of emotional distress. I don't know if that's recoverable in Florida, but you don't really see them specifically mention any causes of actions except in the civil cover sheet where they check negligence. And so I really don't know their theory of negligence in this. And I don't really know what, who would know their theories of negligence. And so what Petito's parents will probably do is file a motion for a more definitive statement or something of the sort to really know what the allegations are, what claims that the Petitos are making. Um, because looking at this, there's really, besides negligence, there really is no way to tell without more explanation. And negligence, there's four things to negligence. There's a duty. You have to show that there was a duty. There, there was a breach of that duty and that there was damages caused by the breach of that duty. And in this situation, I don't see how there was a duty of um, Brian Laundrie's parents to Gabrielle Petito's parents, uh, and they don't really state one in here, or that they have breached that duty, because without a duty, you can't breach that duty. And how that has caused uh, the injuries, the mental and pain suffering that they are experiencing. And obviously it's terrible, um, and it gotta be hard to lose a daughter or son or any children, but it, I don't really see how or what theory of negligence they're going after, but hopefully soon there will be some court documents filed um, to really understand more about what's going on. So I guess we'll have to wait to see exactly uh, how what their theory of negligence is and if they're going to prevail on that. Drop some questions in the comments or if you're following along and if people are, then I'll do some more videos on this and follow along the case and the lawsuit as it's going on. So thanks for joining and we'll see you soon.